Hello everybody. So today I have a video for overclocking the i7-7700K to 5.0 GHz. Now before we do anything here, I just want to state a couple warnings. Uh, the first one being that overclocking is a choice. It's not something you have to do. Um, the settings that I'm about to go over in this video have worked for me, but every CPU performs a little bit differently and I cannot be held accountable if you damage your own hardware. Uh, the second thing being that if you're going to be doing any overclocking, especially with this chip, uh, ensure that you have adequate cooling. Even without overclocking, this is a hot chip, um, and overclocking is just going to make it even hotter. So, one thing to note here is that I've delitted my CPU and swapped the stock thermal insulating material with the Liquid Metal Ultra from Cool Laboratory, and I'm currently using the Corsair H115i. So it's, it's also got liquid cooling. Uh, with this CPU, if you're going to be going to 5.0 gigahertz, I do recommend delitting and I do recommend using <clears throat> liquid cooling. It may be possible to get away with using air cooling if you're using something like the Noctua D15, but I do recommend liquid. Uh, if you're going to be going to 4.8 gigahertz, then you're probably fine on air with, uh, with a decent air cooler and, uh, even more so if, if you've delitted the CPU. So without any further delay, we'll get started here. First thing we're gonna do is, uh, if you haven't already booted into your BIOS, reboot the computer and hit F2 or delete to get into the BIOS. Go to the Extreme Tweaker tab and hit F5 to load the optimized defaults. So that's currently where we're at now. We're gonna scroll down to where it says AI Overclock Tuner and select XMP. We're going to hit no on this notice because basically what this is going to do is set the RAM to all the pre-optimized settings uh, for my RAM sticks and then we're going to be manually adjusting the CPU. So as you can see the RAM's now picked up correctly, it's showing DDR4-3200 uh, with the correct timings and the correct voltage. So the, the next thing is kind of optional but I do recommend uh, at least uh, testing it to see if you if you like using it or not. Uh, the AVX instruction core ratio negative offset is used uh, because the CPU has something called AVX instructions and basically they get used when a software with AVX is detected. So that would be something like Adobe Premiere or Handbrake and uh, essentially AVX is supposed to perform a little bit more efficiently but generally these tools use a hundred percent of the CPU so the CPU will get even hotter and again with overclocking it'll be even hotter than it normally would be on stock speeds so the idea is that if you set a negative offset it's going to down clock the CPU when AVX is detected uh, and you can get away with that because it's supposed to be a little bit more efficient and uh, this will also help with temperatures and stability. So for this I'm going to hit 2 and just to kind of show you why up here as you can see the target CPU turbo, turbo mode frequency was set to 4500 after setting the negative offset to 2 the target CPU at AVX frequency is now 4300 so 2 is equal to 200 megahertz you can do the same thing with 3 it go to 300 megahertz and so on. The next thing is uh, the CPU core ratio. So we're gonna be changing this to sync all cores. And then for 5.0 gigahertz, you're gonna enter 50. And for 4.8 gigahertz, you could do 4.8. <clears throat> Basically all these settings here, we're gonna not even touch. Um, just ensure that the RAM is showing correctly for you. And we're going to go into the DRAM timing control. And it looks like when you select XMP, it might automatically pick mode 1. But I'm going to select mode 2. Uh, the reason for this is mode 1 is supposed to be better for uh, compatibility. Where mode 2 is more so for uh, if you've overclocked your RAM, if your RAM has higher clock speeds, if you have a higher RAM capacity, and it's supposed to just help with uh, overclocking in general. Uh, the next thing is in the external Digi Plus power control, and we're going to change the CPU load line calibration. 
This is something else you can uh, mess around with a little if you want. Uh, what I recommend is setting a level 5. Basically the load line calibration uh, affects the level of voltage supplied to the CPU. The CPU working voltage decreases proportionally to CPU load, so setting a load line calibration value is done to compensate for voltage drop which can occur um, under load and this will cause instability. So the higher the level you set, the more minimal the voltage drop is, so this will help achieve better overclocking performance, but it can also increase operating temperatures when at load. So that's something to keep in mind as well. The whole idea here is to achieve stability. So again, you should have decent enough cooling. Now we just need to worry about getting it stable. So for the CPU core cache current limit max, we're gonna set 255.50. This is the maximum value for this, and basically this is the current, so the amps that are used or drawn by the CPU. Your CPU will not use 255 amps, so it's fine to set this value. Uh, the idea here is that if you set the maximum, there's no way that it can be limited in a way that would cause instability on the system. So the last thing, or one of the last things, is setting the CPU core cache voltage. So this is your V-Core. Um, there's a bunch of different preferences on how to do this. Um, there is no real wrong way. Well, I guess there is a wrong way, but there's no real 100% uh, only one way to uh, do overclocking. So, I mean, it's all based on per preference. And uh, this is kind of just my way of doing it or what I'm comfortable doing. So with manual mode, uh, what you can do is come in here and specify the voltage that you want to use. So as you can see right now, the CPU is currently pulling about 1.312 volts. Um, what I'm going to be doing is setting it slightly above that. So I've found with my system that I can achieve stability at 1.320 volts, so that's what I'm going to be using. Uh, my recommendation is, if you can, start out around 1.30 volts, and then you, you're going to need to do some benchmarking. So boot up the computer, perform some benchmarking. If it crashes or blue screens or just reboots, try going back into the BIOS and then up the voltage by 0 0.005 volts, and then keep doing this until it no longer crashes. If you get to a point where you're nearing 1.40 volts, I'd say uh, it might be possible that your CPU just will not overclock to 5.0 uh, gigahertz. Now, if, uh, if it does, as long as you can maintain decent temperatures, it's fine, but I will say that the higher the voltage is, the more likely, or it's, it's gonna basically be a, even hotter. So the higher the voltage, the hotter your chip's going to be. So that's something to consider as well. Um, again, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't go over 1.40 volts with this chip for 5.0 gigahertz. Um, it shouldn't be needed. So if that, if that happens, then I would recommend try try to get stability on 4.8 gigahertz. Um, for me, the V-Core that I was using at 4.8 GHz was around 1.235. I had no instability issues with that, so that's something you can try as well. And that's pretty much it for the core voltage. Uh, as you can see, the DRAM voltage was automatically set to 1.350. Uh, I'm not going to touch that because it's in and around what it's already pulling. Um, that's pretty much it. So the only other thing that you can do if you want to is uh, go into the tool tab and ASUS overclocking profile. You can save the profile for the settings that you've just set and then that way they'll always be there. So uh, in order to save or reboot with the current settings just hit F10. You'll see CPU core voltage override. So you can see I've actually bumped my vo core voltage a little and then we'll boot into the desktop here.
You'll probably notice when doing overclocking that if you make adjustments to your overclock, the first boot will generally be a little bit slower getting to the actual OS loading section. All right, and I'll just pull up CPU Z here. And as you can see, core voltage is currently 1.312. It's already running at 5.0 gigahertz. And uh, right now I haven't touched speed step or C states. So once the computer or the CPU is in a more idle state, it'll down clock. So that's something else uh, you may want as well. And uh, I did run Prime for three hours yesterday. And uh, after three hours, the max it had done was 80 degrees, but it mostly was around uh, 72 degrees. It was just certain tests, I guess, uh, pushed it to 80. But for three hours at 72-ish degrees um, and no crashing, I would consider this overclock stable. So if you have any questions or corrections to the, any of, of the information I've gone over in this video, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.